So I'm just going to open up today because Jamaica and she's not here, so I'll introduce her if she joins. We'll be hosting and facilitating the first half of this session, which is coming up with the, the initial structure for what this alliance is about. So that's what we're going to talk on and come to a final agreement there, at least for now. And then the second half of this section, if we do break it up into halves, and I'll let Jamaica guide that. Um, we'll talk about the finalization for the selecting the 12 projects so that over the next couple of weeks, however long it takes, we can have them all apply for the next coming sessions and we actually are selecting those 12 projects and moving forward. Um, cool. Did I miss anything, Jamaica or Sydney, or would you prefer if I just passed it to you <laughs> to get us started? Um, all you, Jamaica. I said, yeah, maybe we can just do a round of good mornings really briefly. And um, and then we're going to drop in, yeah, to the arc Reiki offered. We're, we're going to honor the needs of the all and sort of finish the process we were in uh, to just get some grounding foundation. And then we're going to segue into just advancing the process for project selection. So those of you here, hopefully you can be a part of the whole. And then we'll kind of also talk about some sh slight shifts in the pattern of our convening going forward of recalibrating some things to sort of create a little bit more clarity and how people engage and participate. So we'll talk about that too. Um, but let's get started with just good mornings. Um, Reiki, are, do a lot of, these folks mostly have met before. So maybe we could, instead of in reintroducing, because I think everybody here has at least been here a couple of times, we could just say good morning and maybe offer a where you're calling from and one word of something that you feel particularly curious about. I would love to hear what's sort of sparking and what, what's feeling curious. So just your one word check-in, your name, where you're calling in from, and then a one word check-in, that is what you're feeling curious about. And we'll pass it around the circle to get started. So I think we'll go um, with, um, let's see. How about Mark first? Sure. Calling in from Montreal, what I'm curious about, hmm, spring. I'm just loving and feeling curious about spring and all the things and possibilities that come with it. I'll pass it on to Peter. Hello, all. I'm uh, Peter. Uh, I'm calling from Catalonia this evening, and I'm curious about I don't know so many things. Like just the future generally. And I'll pass it on to Neil. Uh, what are the prompts? So where, where you're calling, calling from, from name. What are you feeling? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. All right. Where are you calling from name and uh, what you're curious about? Yeah. Um, Neil calling from DC and I'm curious about um, the, I guess the 12 projects that are ultimately selected. And I pass it on to uh, Nadine, did you go? Thank you, Neil. Thank you all. I love you. Um, Nadim calling on from Mexico, Merida, kind of a Maya big city here. And I'm curious about Starlink Internet. <laughs> and I pass to Stephen. Good day to all. Uh, I know some of you, but I'm new to this group. Uh, I'm calling in from Chicago. I'm Stephen Cutter. Uh, and I'm curious about regenerative uh, gaming and uh, all things hemp. Uh, I think I'll pass it on. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm new to this. I'll pass it on to, to John. Okay, uh, John Love here from uh, Canada, uh, Ontario. Um, and I'm curious about the flows in and out of any unit that make it regenerative versus extractive. And I will pass it on to Liam. What, am I, what are you passing on? I just so joined, sorry. It's okay, we're just doing kind of your name, where you're calling in from, and something you feel particularly curious about, a, a one or two word check in about what you're feeling curious about. Um, okay, I'm calling in, uh, representing Go here. Um, I'm in Oaxaca City, Mexico right now. And what am I curious about? Um, just what, what the new earth looks like um, and my involvement in it. 
Um, I'll pass it on. I don't know who's spoken and who hasn't at this point. Maybe Neil. Neil went. How about William? Hello, I'm William. I'm calling in from Nicaragua. Uh, my curiosity today is how we stay on uh, point as an alliance, um, officialize our members, focalizers, and uh, you know other other ways of participating, and then opening the door to choosing the twelve villages that we're going to have in cohort one. Thanks, William. Let's pass it to Kelly. I'll pass it to oh, I did it for you. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. So I'm Kelly. I'm we're in Costa Rica, and I'm curious about fundraising for communities um, through NFTs. And I'm Joe, also here in Costa Rica, obviously, and I'm stoked to see so many amazing friends here. Stephen Cutter, the world famous, wow, <laughs> gracing our presence. Uh, I'm curious about the ultimate potential of this group, how to organize it, how to implement it, and then how to keep it rolling. Thanks, Joe. I think we'll go ahead and pass that over to Joel. Hi, Joel. Hey, everybody. I'm in Bend, Oregon. It's a little chilly in the desert today. It's great to see everybody down on the tropics. My curiosity is also a little bit of spring and what's been blooming and how this group is forming and collaborating together. Um, super curious. So thank you all. Thanks, Joel. I'll pick up the, the past stick. Um, how about over to Shelby? Howdy. Uh, greetings from Costa Rica um, in the Diamante Valley down here. Costa Rica's tallest waterfall. Can I see it? And really curious about organic architecture. Um, starting building down here, and it's a really totally different process. So you can see that. It's our temple. Um, but just, um, it's a very different building process, but super inspiring and really fun. Thanks, Shelby. Um, let's pass that over to Arrow. Hey there, I'm, I'm super curious here, joining for the first time, seeing, like learning, learning what is it about. Yeah, we're coming from the Starseed Village in Guatemala, close to Lago Atitlan. And nice to see a couple of people, actually only Will that I recognize here. I'm, this is my first time in one of these meetings. My name is Simeon. And yeah, looking forward to seeing um, what this is all about and how we can contribute. Thanks so much, you guys. How about Lucien? Lucien and your friend. <laughs> Hi, Lucien and Lancelot here. <laughs> uh, I'm showing him to Will. Will. Will was staying with us when he was a puppy. Calling him from Ibiza. And uh, I am curious about how we can use time as an ally. Um, uh, it's generally a big curiosity of mine is going to the state where we've been successful, where we've achieved our collective vision uh, and describing uh, what the regenerative civics accelerator or any, any collective quest might look like from that place. And I will go with, um, who hasn't gone? I think Brandon. Yep, Brandon Hello. Is here. Hi, Brandon. Hey, it's good to see everyone. Um, loving these weekly calls, uh, seeing all the updates, all the new different collaborators are coming in. Um, yeah, it's definitely very inspiring and I love to keep uh, adding all the building blocks to push all these systems out. So uh, calling in from Bali and I'll pass it on to whoever uh, has not gone yet. How about on to Grant? Hi everyone. <clears throat> My name is Grant, calling in from Sonoma County, California. Uh, very excited to be on here with everyone. I've wanted to kind of communicate and, and be in this group for a while, and um, I've been speaking with Deem and a lot of people that involved this organization. Really excited about what you guys have been working on, and I've been working on very similar things. Um, I've been very curious about a great many things. I am now curious why we are not free. We're not all smiling every day to be on Utopia Earth and why 
yeah, we're, I feel like we have all the building blocks. So I'm just excited about putting them together. And I th- feel like it really, you know, this so much momentum with groups like this that are just really doing it in real time and really how to align, align all these groups to their most harmonic um, capacity. And very excited to continue the conversation and share some of the projects we've been working on. So I'm just um, very excited to be here with all of you. Thank you for doing what you do. <clears throat> Let's pass that to Christina. Hi, everyone. Christina Trout for Collins, Colorado. I'm super excited to find out how much food we can grow this season and how many communities we can support. So, yay. Um, Thank you. Uh, I'll pass that for you over to Sid. Hi, everyone. I'm Sid or Sydney, and I'm from Delray Beach, Florida right now, anyway. And I am curious about synchronicities. Thanks, Tara. Let's pass that to Reiki. You get to check in too. My name is Reiki. You, most of you all know me. I'm calling in from Utah, right next to an Air Force base, being reminded every day why we need systems change. And I, yep, I'm curious of how we can get rid of Air Force jets because they're annoying. And <laughs> Thanks, Reiki. Um, it says Susan, but I think that you're not Susan, but you get to check in today. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Walter. Susan's my wife. I'm using her uh, yeah. laptop today. Um, I'm calling in from Vilcabamba, Ecuador. And what's really um, exciting for me is meeting all you guys uh, doing different projects and, and uh, I can learn so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think everybody's gone. Is there anybody who's been missed thus far? Don't want to skip, but I think we all got in. I have a Matt. Yeah, I'll go real quick. My Matt, name is Tucker from, yeah, the, Tucker from the Tioga community. Uh, I'm calling in for my car in New Hampshire right now. And I am really excited about getting onboarded to the HypaDAO tool so we can start using it for our projects. Thanks. Yeah, I saw a demo of it this morning. It's so exciting. I'm excited for that too. Um, all right. Well, I think everyone else has gone in. Um, I am I think Jamaica. Matt has I'm calling in. Oh, what's up? I think Matt Pruitt Did hasn't gone. Yeah. I just, I'm sorry, Matt Pruitt. I'm not sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Matt Pruitt, I'm in <laughs> Oakland, California, and just curious to learn more. Thanks. Uh, all right, now I'll make sure one more time. Did we get everybody in? I think we got everyone. Okay. Okay. John is not there. I thought John went. We'll see if he comes back. He can always jump in and say good morning. Um, I'm Jamaica. I'm calling in from Northeastern Washington State and our 65 acre regenerative on its way to regenerative farm. And what I'm feeling particularly curious about right now is radical interconnectedness and how to actually enable that experience embodied of radical interconnectedness with all of life. Um, I am gonna drop us right in. I, that, those introductions are important. We're still sort of a forming group and we also have sort of a bit of time today. Uh, we do wanna try to move through a couple different layers. Uh, we are on number three for context of a three-part process to do what I think as a culture and social art, a culture geek and social architect is like the lightest possible touch to just help establish a little bit of sort of formative substance of self-organizing pattern uh, of which I hope as an organism, we continue to grow and mature and iterate and, and um, that we never see it as static and done. Like we did that process and now we're done, but that it's just enough to get us a little bit more coordinated so we can keep growing together and that we return to this um, as those who are interested continue to grow the architectures and the patterns and the processes that allow for this like self-organizing organism to really flourish and be coherent and coordinated. So we're gonna go through the kind of really fast, I'll give context to where we are. We're gonna drop into just like the last part of an exercise and then we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna go into the project selection process. So that's where we're at. And for those of you who are just arriving, I think it's valuable to just share a couple of bits of overview. So I'm gonna share a screen and you can kind of check it out on your own time if you're feeling curious. 
Uh, for anybody just arriving, let me get us out of the way here. For anybody just arriving, I'm going to stay at a high level uh, so you can see where I'm at, but you can dive in obviously to any of these and really read them over. Please go ahead and check out the context. If you haven't been to any of these calls, this will certainly help you orient to what the heck is going on. Here's some existing um, organizing patterns that had been preset and that we're just advancing on. Um, principles. The, these are sort of the underlying organizing patterns, the living systems, dynamic uh, patterns and processes that we're sort of following and matching. Uh, as we integrate and grow ourselves as a collective organism. So you can check those out. We have already gone through a bit of an alignment process to sort of align to a common purpose statement. Uh, I think that our mission and vision might change over time, but the purpose statement is sort of that North Star that guides us. Like, what are we really aiming for that we can keep as we flex and flow? We can keep ourselves on point and, and re correct ourselves to make sure we're staying on point as an alliance and a collective. This process is something that will need to be sort of integrated into a final statement, but people made contributions here. We also got a bit here into the ethical foundations that guide us, so the guiding principles that we can again refer to to make sure we're staying on point, that we're integrated as a whole, that we're in ethical alignment with what we set out for, and for others joining to kind of see the, the culture um, as, they, as they arrive and make sure it feels aligned for them to join. And then, and I know I'm kind of at a high level view for those who are like, I can't even see anything. Then we also got into just some basic protocols, just best practices for collaborating well together. So all of this will go kind of into like a culture map. That is something then for future participants and members, they can kind of orient to when you're stepping in, you go like, okay, the culture map helps sort of guide. And, and then you can kind of ease your way into participating um, to that end, we have been looking at sort of what are those different levels of participation. We're starting with kind of kind of simple, but this can then grow over time to be more advanced all the way out to global citizens. But right now we're sort of starting with the initial council with the alliance orgs that are um, representative members of that council with the 12 projects that are both kind of members of the council, but also have their own membrane and then obviously our sort of collective co creators. So starting with a few simple rings right now, and I would even add right here in the middle of the civics council, we're starting to work our way into working groups. So we're starting to see pockets of people in pods who are starting to take on different parts of strategic development and the organizing and sort of the parts that the, the whole contains are starting to sort of guild pattern and that would be represented kind of in this the, the councilship that's holding and the stewardship of this effort. Um, you can check out participatory commons if you're interested in seeing sort of a larger scale scale pattern for an effort like this. And then what we worked on last time was really looking at our areas of, of, of like activity, right? And this got a little reorganized in our session. So for anybody who was on last session, to Neil's point about sort of how do we create the simple initial circles that then can have sub circles so that we're sort of lumping different areas and we don't sort of span out too quickly into a lot of nuance, but that we start with sort of general buckets and birth pods, kind of an sociocratic pattern from the general council that can kind of move in a direction. And that within that will be nuanced uh, working groups or nuanced sort of circles of people who help advance their particular area of expertise or interest. So sort of creating that that ability to swell and scale, but keeping it also sort of small and bite size, and then that double linking that brings representation from the council into the pods and from the pods back into the councilships. So we can keep playing with this, but this is what we've landed at thus far, and this should and can be added to. So I welcome um, a quick pass at this actually, to see if anybody wants to just on the fly be additive, to areas that don't seem like they're covered here uh, as an initial first pass, realizing we're gonna complexify, we can get more nuanced, but I'm gonna pause on this before we go to the exercise of today and just have a little sense check for those who've been tracking what our areas of focus are. Uh, and for those just joining for you to see a little bit of what we're working at. And let's just make sure that this feels like good enough for the now and can be added to. So floor is open, we'll pause on that. And then I'm gonna take us through another bit before we, we wrap on this today. Any initial feedback? <coughs> Wait.
Where would the ecological regeneration go under regenerative initiatives or stewardship? Yeah. So I think regenerative, yep, yeah, regenerative initiatives start with the land projects, but as we know, there's other regenerative initiatives that are already starting to birth out of this. So we could kind of add to that. And yeah, I see John and I saw Reiki. Yeah, uh, I think in the area of education and research, I think documenting our process, um, there probably needs to be some, some group that's dedicated to that as we go along. Great. I would actually add to that mapping, if I can. I think mapping our landscape and our ecosystem, there's lots of mappers, and I think starting to merge the maps of the shared ecosystem, the regenerative ecosystem, will provide a lot of insight. So I'm going to add mapping as well. Thanks, John. Reiki, did you have something? Uh, I, I was just going to share another mapping, uh, part of a video that I'm making for Regen Civics to help align it all. If that's helpful, it's just to kind of walk through how we got to this point um, and take three minutes doing that if we find value in that. But I would love us to, you know, discuss all of this before doing that. Yeah, let's see where we land on time today for the sake of context, okay. only because we're trying to get through a few things. But I think that you're holding such, you're, you're an artifact of your own. And I think you have so much to transmit to this collective group. But maybe we, maybe we stay out of content until we get through process and then make sure we have time for content at the end. I think that'll help. Thanks, Reiki. Shelby? Um, yeah, within research, uh, education and research, um, I'm just thinking about this uh, sort of from the, the lens of some of the uh, the communities that may go through the program and thinking about some of the like best practices on social structures. Um, you know, that might just be an interesting, um, interesting thing to put in there. Um, and sort of on a related note, I'm just thinking again, like how all the pieces fit together, like people and communities and the regenerative projects. Under the regenerative economics, I'm wondering if there's sort of like cooperative finance or you know, how can people like, how can the community sort of like earn income in a way that like is generative to the community and the project and possibly the lands? Maybe like collaborative, like economics. I don't know if that's, um, you know, it's like, how, how can people, how can the community sort of like earn and, and participate in projects together? Yeah, and some phrasing, some folks have called that regenerative enterprise. That's kind of like the cottage industries or the different sort of ventures that build sort of economies of scale within communities. I'm gonna add community currencies to this, but if, if you feel that's okay with it, regenerative enterprise could cover kind of what you're speaking to. And I am gonna add like uh, interoperable community currencies, which is a whole other basket of things in here. Um, thank which you, is, Shelby. Which I is also included, in, also included in seeds. I mean, if you... Exactly. And I, they're, they're nested nested ideas inside seeds. Awesome. And under best practices, I would maybe just specify like social structure best practices just around. You bet. Thank you so much, Shelby. Um, I'll add that in there. And I see Christina, we'll take just another minute on this and then we're gonna move things forward. But I really appreciate making sure this feels comprehensive as a first pass. Uh, Christina, go ahead. Sure, I would have just, I would add, but it kind of just got covered. Something about uh, marketplace, but you know, to have that be an evolutionary process as we're going. So like it would have, you know, onboarding and curating it, curated kind of qualities. And then um, if there's a mention somewhere of just bridging other web three um, entities somehow. And maybe in partnership and networks. Um, as in, you know, other Web3 entities there. Great. And I'll come back and clean all this up and we'll kind of fix it. We'll make it a graphic that can be pulled out and continue to work on, but pulled out and like kind of remix for other, um, like put into materials that kind of show our, our areas. Um, I see Lucien and then Grant, and then I think we'll pause only for the sake of time and people can be additive to this offline as well. Lucien, go ahead and then Grant. Thank you, Jamaica. I just firstly want to say this is very, uh, very, very good. Great visual illustration of the discussions we've had. Um, I wonder whether we should say something around like the commons, like commons infrastructure. I think it's covered in a few different areas here. 
Um, but that being like having a commons fund, for example, um, where we would actually go out and raise a fund that m investors can then be able to, in one go, invest in multiple projects. Um, I think that was something we've discussed. Um, and the other one, I think it might be worth specifying with the narrative development. I really feel like we as a, you know, accelerator um, can play a role as an ecosystem in developing the narrative. And, you know, that can go into all sorts of aspects of culture. So I think connecting the narrative and culture would be an interesting one to raise here as well. But I think you've yeah. done an amazing job. Well done on visualizing s several months of conversations here. <laughs> Making a good effort at it. And it's, you know, it's still living. It's sort of forming itself, isn't it? But hopefully this helps us see ourselves just a little bit better. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lucien. Grant, that's over to you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I have a background in finance and really have been looking at these things like regenerative and free energy systems and how to kind of tie them together to make them as harmonic and efficient as possible. And I think that with, you know, that's why I really love seeds and the whole vision because with, with farming is representing one of the greatest ways to create an economy Our you know, we have oil and get gold based economies, but really it should be uh, plant based because it's the most regenerative. Like I was just commenting to somebody else, like, hemp and certain plants are the best solar planners solar panels on this planet they're turning energy you know we're basically dirt mining and with the sun creating um the greatest you know industrial use of we've ever seen on this planet you know hemp takes the top 100 categories of human usefulness and i've just been in the hemp industry and just finding ways that we can just daisy chain four over unity systems to create such an amplified energy field that it would should overflow into all these other communities and really aligning that, you know, focusing in the financial component really unlocks so much growth potential. And so I would love to be able to share. I have like I wrote a green paper for a very similar product. I'd love to be able to share and, and kind of really amplify that energy. Just wanted to uh, comment on that. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, I think so. I, I think we should keep adding to this, but I think what's going to be true is that if we're really doing the thing, the thing, then what we're doing is harnessing the collective genius of each of us, our areas of focus, our bodies of expertise, the different kinds of work we do, and we're leveraging that mutually for the for the greater commons. And I think that the, the pattern of setting up kind of a duocracy that allows us all to sort of find our right fit in the system, bring our gift, amplify, and then leverage to kind of create that toroidal effect of what we pour into the system starts to be outputs that we collectively both generate and benefit from. And we just keep that flowing. So I think that what's true is that many of you, many of us are holding incredible ventures, incredible like parts of the system that are super required to create that like real comprehensive toroidal flux is a fun word I'm going to throw in. Um, but I think it's only going to come if we know how to best harness and participate. If we really know how to like jump in, find my right fit, what can I contribute? Sort of like, how do I play? Where do I have agency to drive something or make a decision? Uh, where am I, uh, you know, part of a collective that needs to kind of move in common? All of that is what we're aiming to try to create here is the ability to self-organize based on a pattern. So I love that there, I think from this can spark a lot of initiatives. And I do wanna move us to the initiative that has been clearly stated, which is to initially fund the first uh, cohort of the 12 projects. So one thing I wanted to do, we're gonna do it kind of live and then we're gonna do it uh, on Discord as well, is the last piece we wanna really drop in is the different roles and functions within the system. I honestly like functions better than roles. I think roles, get us a little bit bound into like, I, I'm a role and I do a thing and here's my bucket and I sit in my box. And if there's anything to know about this crew is we don't like being put into boxes. We're all sorts of fun geometries and shapes and we don't just fit in a box you could check off. So I feel like in a circular leadership pattern, functional domain is a more dynamic way of having different levels of function in different areas. Meaning you can be a focalizer in one key area that you really drive and a member in another key activity, right? That we can play dynamic things rather than like, I'm a CEO and these are the things that fall in my domain. I think functions allow us to play different parts at different times to kind of weave in the things that are interesting to us and play in different 
levels of participation, essentially. So to that point, we've already identified a few functions in the system that we need to ensure shared leadership and to make this thing hum and not fall on a few to kind of move it along, but really distribute to the many, the agency and the responsibility to help move things forward. The identified functions so far is focalizers that help coordinate calls, communicate with members, they help moderate sessions, they keep us on task with any sort of milestones or deliverables. Uh, they may be a representative of the general counsel, but they're also helping to focalize particularly pods and working groups. So these are the people saying, I'm going to take responsibility to help coordinate things and make sure stuff is flowing. Um, Reiki has been kind of our master focalizer in a lot of ways, and Reiki, uh, for a lot of reasons, needs to distribute. And a lot of us are starting to step in, right, and take a, like kind of a supportive lead role of helping make sure some of this moves forward. The archivists are people who help participate in the sessions. They take notes, they record calls. You share like the format of things and help basically keep us organized. It's a lot to both facilitate and also like keep all of the information flows going. So archivists are those who take on helping take notes, helping make sure like recordings get sent out, helping make sure follow-up happens with information flow. Members in general are just simply the participants that we help sort of determine and fulfill the, the goals of a group uh, that we might be participating in. We might take on tasks, we might sort of help influence decisions, or in general be a part of the process um, without necessarily having a particular kind of function we're playing other than it's required to sort of have the membership body just be engaged. So that's members. Representatives are people who sort of help do the report back. So if what we start to do is break out into pods, the communication flows back to the center and back out are so essential. So representatives can be like an archivist, they can be a, um, a focalizer, they can be a facilitator, but essentially they are the ones who are helping to make sure that information is flowing. So you're tracking what's happening, you're tracking member needs, you're tracking the voice of the circles, and you're bringing that representation between the different circles. So you can play a dual function, but that's a very particular thing that you're doing is tracking the information flows. Facilitators, and this is something we're going to start doing, is we really want to kind of birth a pod of facilitators that can be drawn upon to help do kind of what I'm doing now, although I'm kind of playing a focalizer and facilitator role. Uh, but just help facilitate sessions that we're going to start breaking out into pods or having different kinds of sessions. Reiki and Sid and I talked about how great it would be to kind of have a few of us that can be called upon to play that function of, of helping to facilitate a good session, helping sort of track the flow of voices being heard in the center, um, make sure things stay on task. So anybody who's particularly interested in that, we thought we would do even a little sidebar kind of training guild. The facilitators then can be drawn in to different kinds of circles to support and serve the function of the conversations. And then lastly, advisors. And I think those are folks who don't necessarily have uh, the same ability, desire, or bandwidth to just jump in on tasks, but their expertise is paramount. And we can draw upon our uh, advisors at very key junctures where we need expert advice, we need insight, we need sort of the reflection of those who aren't maybe holding the center core, but are capable of holding the whole um, and can be drawn upon when we need mentorship or guidance outside of sort of the collective. So advisors is another key way to contribute. So I know that's a lot, but I wanted to say it for anybody not looking at the screen. And then I'm going to pause. And what we kind of like to do now is whether it's in the chat or whether it is here on the board, what we'd like to do is really find out with the first pass where people feel interested in playing, meaning, you know, are you interested in a particular sub circle that's forming, which are just the general alliance council, the projects and initiatives, the kind of design systems ops kind of work, this kind of work we were doing today, or the regenerative economics, there's a lot happening in that whole circle. So we're kind of just starting to see where people place on a map, what level of engagement, like you're like, I could be a member in the regenerative economics, and I could help be a focalizer in the projects and initiatives, just if you put your name in one of these categories. And if you put uh, kind of what function you're most interested in, it doesn't lock you in. It's not a hard, fast commitment. Between this and the forms that Sid filled out or sent out to everybody, we're just trying to understand where people's natural interests are, their level of ability to contribute, so we can start getting the right people placed in the right kinds of calls, the right kinds of conversations. So that's now an active exercise. If you want to put it in the chat because you can't add it to the Miro, I will do that on your behalf. So I'm just going to take a few quiet minutes 
and just start seeing what you might be able to plug into and I'll also open for any questions. I know that's a lot, but I'm trying to move fast so we can get to projects. Thank you, John. I'm gonna add you to facilitators. Mural link, yes, here is the mural link. And I'll actually give it to you right to where we are right now. So this mirror link will, should get you to the area on the board we're working on right now. Here you go. Can you, Reiki, can you talk about what you put in the chat while people are, um, while people are kind of adding their thoughts? I think this is a super important thing to note in terms of like, a. a reciprocity and value accounting that happens in communities to acknowledge contribution and participation. Can you just speak to that out loud while people are working on this? Yes. Sure. So I said this term Dow do, which some of you might know, let me literally show you ours. Um, so this is the Haifa Dow, also called do, where you can then come here and you can actually look at some of the roles that have been agreed. So she just went over Jamaica, some of the roles. So in the future, when we set up our region civics DAO, people would be able to come here and see the different roles that are available, you know, click on it, see what the roles, um, what's required, what's the accountabilities, what powers they have, and then start issuing um, compensation. So when people are showing up and contributing to region civics, they could start earning region civics tokens. Or once we get a treasury, once we get funded, we could start paying people out for, you know, serving these roles. Um, so then people can come here and into our DAO, you could see some assignments for people's roles right now. And let's just click on one. You can see someone coming up saying why they want to be in that role, how much time they want to commit to it, how much they want to take deferred pay. So this is how much they want to get paid in, you know, region civics tokens first taking out of our treasury. And if we start with zero treasury, then, you know, everyone's going to have to be 100% deferred, like you see this person here. And then we can all vote on it within all the membership and the alliance. We can start exploring this. Who gets to vote on all of these roles? You know, this is something for us to keep exploring as we keep evolving. You know, but region civics itself could be a uh, down just like this. Um, I'll probably stop there because I could go on for way too far. So was that helpful? Slash, any questions on that before we keep going? Okay, well then I'll share one more thing of context then. Uh, that might be helpful. So this is part of a video that I'll be making. But anyway, I wanted to show just one slide here. And that is this one, because this will help tell like the whole story, what's going on here. So then Region Civics DAO will be over here where all those roles are at and all the different alliance organizations. So when I was talking about that Region Civics token, that's going to go out to all the ally organizations who are part of it, and then also all the people who are holding roles. So they're earning these tokens. So then when we go to institutions and we're saying, hey, you want to invest in an index of change-making organizations, and they just buy Regen Civics tokens from Regen Civics, and they send in Euro, crypto, whatever. So this is how we start building our treasury as an alliance. And then this is what we're using to help launch land projects. And then all the land projects also send their tokens back to Regen Civics. So Regen Civics itself starts being representative of all the different land projects we're supporting, all the different allies within the organization, and that's how we can then approach institutions and say, hey, you know, we have this whole ecosystem of organizations, projects, et cetera, that you can invest into. So our governance exploration is how do we then distribute those funds? You know, if we do get, you know, a billion dollars in funding to deliver this way, how does that money then, you know, spread throughout the whole ecosystem? Where does it go to the different alliance um, organizations and projects? And then you see a little thing coming down here. This is where it connects with seeds. And all of this will be explained in the video that I'm making about this, if this is totally alien for you. But for those who kind of understand it, this is you know, a little bit of a picture here. So I'll stop. Thank you so much, Reiki. Um, I just wanted to add a couple of things that are happening over in the chat. Um, 
I wanted to say thank you to John. Uh, you, you helped me remember a few more levels that feel important to add. One would be elders. I think advisors or particular areas of expertise can be called upon. And I think our elders is a very specific function and um, offering of service to the whole. And that is to connect the wisdom keepers, the story keepers, the mentors, the guides. And we have some incredible elders in our space. So I really do feel like having a particular representative uh, space that honors that, that function is, is beautiful. Beautiful. So we've added elders and then also weavers. And, and we did talk about that last time that that point of where what we're doing starts to create this dock port. So if that circle of participation is sort of a, a participatory commons nexus of our own, what we're doing when we create this many to many pattern, which is certainly being able to like what we're doing at Open Future Coalition, a lot of the work y'all are doing is what are the architectures processes, pattern flows, and structures that allow the dock port of many different circles, alliances, initiatives to start moving in common and to start weaving between them so we're not constantly siloed and redundant and honestly spinning our wheels and not connecting and coordinating as a collective whole and cross-pollinating our efforts. So the weavers are incredibly important. I would put them as the way we're doing kind of representatives is the internal ability to move between the circles, the pods, the areas of focus within our own membrane. Where where our membranes start to connect and then almost replicate that same pattern, which by the way, there's some really awesome organizing patterns around water molecules and how they actually create those structures. And that's what we're mirroring here uh, and many other living systems I could point to that do this anyway. So that's a really important point of the weaver and the weaver is sort of what goes external and weaves in, whereas I think the representatives help weave within the system. So that's how we're gonna achieve, I almost say escape velocity. I don't know why that word came in, but like that's how we're gonna achieve the velocity of swell and scale needed to really see these efforts start to take hold and not be siloed. So thank you, John, for those additions. I'm going to give it just another moment here for anybody who wants to sort of add their fit. We will take this to Discord as well. This is not an end-all be-all. It's just we want to start orienting to how do we all play in our system. And that way, um, we can start actually getting like facilitators trained up we can start getting focalizers, the kind of information they need to help coordinate breakout calls. And while we're kind of finishing this, I'll just add this little last piece and then I'm going to hand it over to Sid and Reiki for the projects. Here's a couple of changes that we wanted to make. We want to make sure, I'm going to acknowledge those new in the space. Going forward, what we want to do is have a half hour before general counsel, which these are becoming sort of general counsel, for anybody who hasn't attended sessions yet to have an opportunity to come arrive, introduce, uh, look through resources, get oriented to workspaces. Basically part of some of the tension is some of us have been rocking and rolling and we're oriented and we're contextualized and we're just excited to kind of take the next turn of momentum. And for new folks, it's a lot to just jump into and be like, okay, I don't know where I am, but this is fun. Let's go for it. We'd really like to actually integrate you, welcome you, like let's show you around the place a little. So then if you join a call that happens half an hour after, um, you'll be more like, okay, I know where I am. I know what's going on and I'll kind of jump in from there. So going forward, anybody who hasn't attended a call, we're gonna put a little membrane around general counsel. You attend an onboarding call first, it happens half hour before, and then we'll go into the meeting. So that's one change. The other thing is we've decided we're going to hold these general council meetings every other week to give some space for more of the breakout sessions to happen in the off weeks. So we'll be holding the same time, but those sessions will either be about a shared something that needs to move forward as a collective whole, or those sessions will be about breakouts. So we'll all gather on the off week, but it'll be about getting people kind of in some working pods and then harvesting that as a collective. So the format might change, but that, that time is for driving the different areas and circles and then report backs and kind of larger kind of, you know, collective sense making and moving things forward will happen every other week in the general council call. So that's another big shift. I hope that that really supports a little bit more kind of I'm in the right call. I'm in the right part. I know what I'm talking about. We need to come together. And now actually we need to start breaking out and moving and like working on some of these pieces to advance. So that's the other key change that we'll be making. And I think Reiki and Sid, I, what did we decide what next week's call is? I think we decided next week's call is a Maybe you guys can help me if we decided next week's call is a breakout or a general council to start the pattern of every other week. Reiki, do you remember what we said? 
Um, we didn't say anything, and that's probably why there's a confusion because we're going to ask everyone today what would be the best way to spend that time next week. Um, yeah, how about it, guys? It's an open casting call. Would it be more beneficial to start getting some breakout pods next week or to have one more general counsel and then start the breakout pods like the following time? Maybe one last uh, general counsel. Okay. Any yeah, other thoughts? Why don't, you, why don't you ask it as a, a thumbs up, from sideways, so thumbs down. So resonance, thanks, John. So resonance <laughs> uh, is a process we brought in. This is a fun one and it's easy to do online. Essentially, if we put some a proposal into the center and we need to get a quick pass on ideas, a thumbs up either using your emoji or actual thumb uh, is a, yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, a middle is uh, I, I would pass, it's fine. Um, I'm not gonna block. And then if we have a lot of no's, it's because something needs more consideration and discussion. So to the point of what if we start next week, as one more general counsel and then spark into breakouts. Can we get a little resonance check on whether we're good with that? We're neutral, it's fine, I don't really care. Or whether I'm a like, nope, that doesn't work for me and I wanna chat. Thank you, I see neutral, I see thumbs up. Cool, Kelly and Joe figured out the neutral emoji. Great, okay. I see that that passes. Um, so next week we'll do one more general counsel and that would be a great launch point to whatever the, the topic and focus is for that week. At least a little segment of it should be, we're going to prep for the following week, getting people into kind of working pods. Um, it doesn't have to be the whole call, but at least we end that call knowing what's going to happen the following week and where people are kind of routing. Um, one more thing to add into this with those working calls, we're practicing circular leadership. So there's someone facilitating each call. Um, so if you're the facilitator, you're facilitating it until you pass it off. And it is kind of like a baton and we do encourage to pass it. So pass it to somebody else and then it's yours until you pass it. So that way facilitation who's holding space for each one of those working groups can just keep rotating throughout the, the alliance as we need. Yeah, and just one more one more fine point in that part of what is is we, we are trying to birth a circular leadership. We want facilitators to people who want to start taking that function jump in like let's share best practices right, but to Reiki's point. Uh, the system itself will wobble if we're too reliant and there's like a you know like a. Uh, block point if somebody like I can't make it for a couple of weeks or I need to step out for family reasons or whatever the system will start to collapse if we're overly reliant on only a few people to drive certain things so what we want to do is start growing our capacity to take on different roles and flux within the system so that we can simply recirculate um, and it's also just good practice and fun and we all get to grow together but it's also a little bit of resilience because I've certainly seen groups that fall if you're reliant on one or two key people and life happens because it does the thing starts to like disorient itself so we want to really build resilience in our system so anybody who's feeling like inspired has that skill wants to learn let's grow our capacities to all sort of hold the whole and move between the system fluidly um so that's that's like handoff is is to reiki's point rather than just being like i'm bouncing i can't come to a session if you were holding a process or a particular area of focus, you're handing it to someone. You're like, I have to step out, I'm handing it to you. They're taking it on and the system then can keep flowing. And it's not sort of left with a like, I don't know who's holding it because we handed it to somebody before we left. So I see, um, hi, Steven. And then we're gonna wrap on this y'all and we're gonna get into projects. So thank you for taking the time on this. I hope it's been helpful. Steven, go ahead. Yeah, I just was wondering if there shouldn't be some kind of a role for continuity for somebody who just holds the space of continuity because this is going to be a very dynamic flowing uh, process where people are in and out many many people in and out different times but we also need to hold continuity alignment in the center who who is holding that um i think that's a function that you find in nature and if we're mimicking nature we need to find a way to accomplish that. Thanks, Stephen. I think it's been imagined partly as the focalizers, but Reiki has been naming their sort of a stewards council. That's yeah. like, I'm not going anywhere. 
I might shift my function, but I'm holding the awareness of the whole, whether we name that as a function or whether it's one of our rings of like there's general counsel and then within general counsel there's a circle that's like coherence holders. Uh, I think Reiki has named it and I think it's about where do we want to put it on the map. Um, to kind of hold that space for exactly what you spoke to, which is like coherence, um, stewardship of the whole. Um, so Reiki, maybe, yeah, maybe we can all think about where we want to put it as a function or whether it's a level of participation that it has its own little circle, but you're absolutely right. It's required. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. Uh, thank you to all of you who added your thoughts here. I will go through the chat and add anybody else's. I know that was fast and furious, but honestly, it's not nearly as much time as we need, but hopefully this helps going forward and a little bit of reorganization. And I'm going to hand it off now to talk about the project selection process. And we can always keep following up. There will be a circle specifically focused on the continuation of this body of work. And so welcoming anybody who wants to geek out on living systems architecture and organizational design and all this good stuff. Handing it on to the projects team and thank you. All right. I think that's you. I think I was holding space because it's Sydney and I who's taking on projects. Um, so maybe Sydney, if you want to open us up and talk about some of the projects that have applied and what that next step process is going to look like. Um, but just high level from what I know, uh, over 30 have applied and we had talked about having one session where everyone joined and then did their pitch. But now that seems like that would be way too long. Um, so there's an alternative proposal on the table for how we can go about this. And I think I'll let Sydney take it from there because she's been working on all this. Sure, yeah, just doing a little bit of math here, thinking that would make what would make most sense is people just submitting their five to seven minute video and then holding space for Q and A's for those individuals who do have time to review all that material. Um, and some of you have already started submitting those videos, so that's great, but I just think that's the best way for us to get through it all without having to take up like four 90 minute meetings of pitches. Um, so basically, the proposal is submit those videos and then gather to do Q and A's. Does that feel okay? We could do a thumbs up, I don't care, or down. <laughs> All right, looks like everyone's cool with submitting videos and gathering for Q and A's. Awesome. Thank you. When to submit by? Good question. What should we do for a deadline here? And when to do the Q and A's? Um, so I could propose that right now and I'll actually bring up a tool that we could use. So what I actually suggest is that for the next two weeks, projects are applying. So get your video on ASAP and then I'll give us some time to watch them. And then next week when we gather, we can have some of those videos and we could talk about it. And that might be one of the breakouts for next week. And then the call after that, we can come together and use some tool. Here's an example of a tool that we can use, actually. Let me show it off. It's kind of cool. Um, never mind. I'll make a small video of it and share it in the Discord. But there's a, a tool that we can use. Then we all have different points. And then we can apply them to the different projects that have all applied. So then the Alliance itself, everyone who keeps showing up to these calls, will pick which one of the 12 we want to have by distributing at our points and then the 12 projects that earn the most points based on whatever criteria we're applying for right now, we'll get it. I know we had talked about creating an objective criteria to be part of those first 12, um, but that's something I think is going to need some more time and we're going to need to you know keep figuring that one out. Um, so for this particular thing, it's just going to be, uh, it's kind of like dot voting. So again, we'll have like 100 in this particular tool, they call them small rocks. And then we distribute those rocks out to the different projects that we want to support. Um, do we all like that idea? I mean, that's one idea unless somebody else has a different tool that we can use to you know, crowdsource what 12 projects we can select. If you have any other ideas of other tools, just share it in the Discord. And then after we pick the 12, then we'll have one session where those 12 show up and then get about 10 minutes to share what they are. So then we have one artifact, which is a 90 minute video here showcasing all 12 projects. 
And then that's what we can use for part of the crowdfunding campaigns and start hyping up everything we're doing here. We'll share what the projects are, helping people get an understanding of who they are, let them know that the crowdfunding is coming up in a few more months um, and start preparing for that. And then that's where the NFT circles can start weaving in because they're the ones creating the art for the crowdfunding campaigns and all that stuff. Um, so that's a quick high level snapshot and I'll pause there. If there's any thoughts, reflections or anything about that. Sure, Will. Just trying to follow protocol with the hands raising thing. Um, so there's a yeah there's a there's a few questions in the chat right now about what the video would contain like what the alliance would want to see and also um who is actually deciding like my understanding of this today's session was to effectively choose the members the focalizers which we've just done in a way but is that official do we need to vote everyone in do we need to say these are the alliance members these are the people that are voting on the projects um yeah that's some some questions that are coming through now and then yeah is it just as simple as these questions are in the submission form we're now going to record a video and share them with you or do you want to see something more creative um and it, you just said 90 seconds so is it a 90 second video or a five minute video or both sorry how, how, what's... Um, yeah, yeah i was just, just trying to uh, yeah, my role here is to try to summarize what we want. So don't ask me what I want. I mean, it's trying to figure out what we want as an alliance. Um, I meant to say 90 minute. So the 12 projects, there's one 90 minute video that has all the different projects. That's what we want as an artifact. I think that's the longest we could go um, showcasing all 12. But for the submissions, this is how much time are we willing to put into all the projects to really try to figure out what we want to vote for. So I think you know five minutes is probably the most for a project submission, because that's five minutes times 30 projects right now. So we're talking 150 minutes to be able to go through that, right? Um, it's a big time commitment. So I think the only objective criteria I'm personally advocating for now, and I'd love to hear everyone's opinions on this, is that you just have a five minute video and it's up to you what you wanna put into that video in order for us to you know, select you. So really it's about where your, you know, what your project is, what your vision for that project is, you know, where you're at in the project, why you're a good candidate for this, et cetera. I mean, anything else you would do to apply for any type of incubator, right? Um, but now I can leave this floor open right now in case anyone wants to add to that, to add to what that five minute video might entail. Yeah, and then also the last question of who's, who's deciding. Like within this group, within this alliance, who is voting on those projects? Cool, so I'll quickly respond to that and then we'll go back to the other one. Um, in the future, once we have our due set up, then all of this could be on chain. But I know that a lot of us are impatient and we wanna get going and the projects are here right now. So <laughs> that's kind of where kind of like moving fast, testing the process right now and just using whatever tools are available. Um, so that's what I'm advocating for just to keep things moving along is that when we have that decision call, which is maybe two, three weeks from now after the projects have been able to submit, then just whoever shows up to that call, we'll literally real time, bring out the tool, have all 30 projects there, we'll distribute our tokens and we'll find out who the 12 are going to be. So in that sense, it's literally whoever's part of our alliance that shows up to that call. So it'll be in the email chain is the only people who are getting these invites anyway. So there's about 40 people in that. So right now it's, if you're in that email chain, you're gonna get an invite to that call and then you get to vote. So it's, it's a very loose boundary right now, but for sure going forward, I would love to have that be, you know, you have a role in the DAO, it's on chain, we know who you are, it's been voted in, and then your votes are all happening on chain too. So that's kind of, you know, where we're headed towards, but you want to get going, right? Um, so that's my opinions. So there's two different topics there. Put your hands up if you want to respond to any of these, and I will send it to Lucian. Thanks, Raiki. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to just to offer to the circle uh, the the idea of having like a one minute, one, one minute, 11 seconds uh, short of what's your completed vision. So I find it really useful with the up game to invite people to step into say 2030 as a shared date and say that it's 2030, this is what's happened and, and, and invite everybody to speak their completed vision. 
uh, because that way we really do see how we're all on the same team and we're developing that narrative. And those videos can be put together into a really interesting fundraising story for investors. So I'd love to invite somewhere in that section of, of, of five minutes for, for folks to, to share a completed vision narrative. I love that. Thank you. I'll step in. Brandon, do you want to share? <laughs> yes. Do we want to have this in some kind of like pitch deck format um, within the presentation? Um, and then also I have another question is, do if like some of the projects, the owners, um, let's say I, I could maybe be a, a representative or speaking on behalf of their project. I have a couple of different projects that I'm helping with selling houses at. So is, is if I were to have like say five different pitch decks of different projects, um, is that all right to submit those videos on, on behalf of that? I say if you're representing these projects and there's no barriers to implementing the works that you're striving towards. Yeah. And, and I don't think any of us have like a, a right or a wrong here. I think it's whatever you feel compelled to share. And we did co-create that form that went out to everyone asking all those questions. So I feel like if everyone strived to respond to those questions in their video, that would provide a nice overview. And then I noticed, Reiki, you just posted next steps in the chat as well. Um, and we can just use our thumb, you know, sense check here real quick. How do we feel about three weeks being the date that we reconvene and pick the 12 projects? So we send out the invite now. We have three weeks to get those videos submitted, to look at them. And then in third, the third week, because next week is our council one, and that's when we start the every other week. So the first time at the other way of the week, we come together and then we'll literally vote on the 12th. Yeah. And then after we vote on the 12th, which will be the first half of that session, then the second half of it is what are next steps? Now we're starting the crowdfunding and starting to get this out, et cetera, moving forward. Um, yeah. Does anyone have anything they would add or change to that loose agenda? Um, two things. One, am I right in... in my understanding of listening to this that there's going to be um every video that gets submitted put together in one long video for the members of this alliance to watch before the third call that we're talking about where we come together and vote okay um and then that inspires the idea if, if everyone that's creating these videos now creates them with the idea that they're going to be presented to um yeah other people in the future as well so start thinking of you know how could this video be purposed beyond just the application for this incubator imagine that you've already been selected you're one of the 12 and we want to showcase all of the 12 this video would be what we would show so um just sharing that and planting that seed to create um yeah the, the best quality that we can create and also uh, future insight and value for, from it cool. Come on, ask yeah, one of my favorite permaculture principles is stacking functions. Uh, let's definitely try to apply that here, especially when we're creating digital content, and spending time on our computers, that everything has multiple functions. So absolutely, the video you're making, that five minute one, this is a pitch for your project too, that maybe you should probably already have <laughs> if you're a project for, you know, sharing out into the world. Uh, so it's that same thing. You know, we are an audience of people who you just want to let us know why we want to be part of your project, because if we would want to be part of it, we'd probably want to vote for it and see it in this alliance, right? Um, so make the same video for that purpose. And then that one could be repurposed for when you do your presentation just a little bit longer because you have more time um, for the longer session where all 12 projects then showcase who they are. Um, but at any rate, you're only going from five to 10 minutes maximum. So the key is to get it around five minutes so that people actually watch it and have time for it. I'm putting out a lot of strong opinions just to try to give us like some alignment. So please, if you're feeling anything different about this, just put your hand up and let's weave in your wisdom that you're holding. All right, um, are we quiet because it's just, it all makes sense, we're fully aligned, we get it, we're ready to go, or are we quiet because there's some confusion still? 
We're good to go. Awesome. Uh, we got a hand up from Stephen. Uh, just to clarify this process, I, I heard you describe it. So if there's 30 projects times five minutes, that's a lot of video watching. It seems like maybe we might want to have a process for winnowing down and and screening and getting to say the top 10 or something that do it in a couple of phases. Um, that's what the, the criteria we are working on would serve that so that there is some objective criteria that you have to meet these or at least earn enough points in this criteria for going forward. I don't know if that's necessary now because 30 projects times five is 150 minutes. It's not too long. Um, but certainly as this starts expanding, I can imagine that's going to get out of control, which is why we needed that criteria to then narrow it down to the top, you know, 30 or whatever that actually make a video. Um, so when we go through the five minutes, these 30 projects, let's definitely sense is this too much time is 150 minutes, it's overwhelming. You know, we actually might find this to be super enjoyable because every project is incredibly inspiring and, you know, it's opposed to watching Netflix, we're going to watch this instead, you know, and 150 minutes is not long enough. You know, we don't know, so let's be alive during that process and figure it out if this is too much time or not enough time, too many projects or not, and then we'll find that sweet spot. And then once we do find it and we say, hey, 30 projects at five minutes is sweet, then when we're going to the objective criteria in the future, we know how many to narrow it down to. We say, okay, the top 30 that earn points are going to be able to actually present, and then we're going to narrow it down to that 12, right? Um, so let's be alive in this process. I don't know if we need to winnow it down beforehand because again, there's only about 30 something that have applied right now. Um, yeah, I'd agree with you, Raggy. I don't think we, I think we can develop the process as it scales. Um, and right now we, we're in an experiment and uh, this would be a best way for us to get to know like who are we engaging with and what are the patterns there? I think it's really good practice for us all to do that. So I'm happy to dedicate that time and, um, and, and look forward to learning with others on it. Awesome. Um, Kelly and Joe, can I hand up? Hey, so um, I was thinking for the criteria piece, um, if there was some sort of scoring mechanism on each of those, like even just a range, like how much does it meet this criteria one to 10 kind of scale? It could give an easier way for people to vote to really understand like where they're at and just, you know, have something like a simple little way of, of scoring um, so that they can, if they're deciding between two communities, but one meets more like a small bit than the other, then they can clearly see that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for, uh, for the scoring process, if that helps. Um yeah, I love that. And we could probably even start that immediately if there's enough people who want to do it. We can start a working group that if you want to actually look at all 30 videos and give them a score so that the rest of the alliance then has that score to work off of, or even just watch the top you know, 15 projects that have been scored if you're short on time, that could be great. So if you want to be part of that working group, actually, we can say so now. Put your hand up. I see Sydney clapping her hands. Brandon's got his hand up. So what I suggest is uh, if you want to be part of that, just reach out to Sydney. And then Sydney, do you want to coordinate that? Or Brandon, do you want to? Sydney? Cool. So <laughs> reach out to Sydney. Uh, second thing, I assume Sydney's already got this because she shared it in the chat. And let me know if I'm putting you on the spot. Um, to send out the invite to the projects of the criteria. So if you have anything that you want to be part of that invitation that we're going to send out and asking them to make their five minute video, also send that to Sydney um, so we can get that out ASAP. Sydney, is that okay? No. It is, unless Brandon is really excited and wants to take this on. Just want to check. Uh, yeah, we can, um, yeah, let's, let's have a meeting in the operations on that. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm keen awesome. to follow, uh, follow up on that. Yes. Cool. We'll work together. Sounds good. Um, Will, you got your hand up. Uh, oh, my bad. I was putting my hand up to say, yeah, I want to be part of that uh, group. So Brandon and Sid, I'll be, I'll be working with you on that. Yeah, I can also help with that too. All right, um, we have four minutes left. So to honor our time boundary, I'm gonna send it back over to Jamaica, our main host today. And if 
No? <laughs> All right. No. no, that's good. Um, only, only that. Yeah, no, just, I think we're just wrapping for today. I just want to really appreciate the, how do I say it? The maturing capacity to like move together that that like swarm quality I'm starting to witness it and I'm super excited and I hope it feels nourishing where sometimes the dynamic tension of a creative chaotic process is like uh, I don't quite know where it is and I know this group's been kind of in that and I feel like we're just birthing into our next level of like okay I know how to play I see where we're at I see us moving things forward and it feels generative so I'm really just wanted to celebrate and and thumbs up um, all of you all and, and those who watched the recording and just weren't here today who were so key and part of this process to make it to this far. And I'm just excited where we're gonna head together. I don't think there's much other than if you said you'd follow up on something, just follow up in a timely way. That's the last piece is accountability and follow through to anything you said. But as long as we jam on that, I think we're moving in a really good direction. So that's a checkout from me. Um, any other final thoughts, I suppose, with the two minutes we have, if you just want to say goodbye or thanks or write on or anything else, I think we're good. Thank you, Jamaica, for the incredible work that you're doing with visioning and mapping everything. And wow, just wow. It's cool. Ditto, right on. <laughs> Honored to serve y'all. Well, uh, feel free to unmute your mics, make some noise, say goodbye, hi, and we'll see you all in the metaverse in next week's. Thank you so much. Bye Thank bye. you so much, everybody. Thank you, guys. Take care. Take care. Great to love, everyone. Be here. Thank you. Love. Hey, let's maybe create a community chat um, with, I think, Kelly, Will, 